This video is all about your hips, and in particular, how to use them so they will last a lifetime. I'm going to tell you things no one ever tells you, which is sad, but you'll see it's rather logical, and you'll learn how to use your hips all your life without pain or any wear and tear. Let's have a closer look at our hip joint. The hip joint is a ball and socket joint with a perfect fit. Here you have the head of the bone and here the socket in which everything runs smoothly. This joint allows you motion in all directions, to the outside, inside, forward, and back, and you can rotate it. If you use all these angles in everyday life, everything will run as intended. And these various angles squeeze various spots of cartilage. What exactly happens here? When you squeeze the cartilage, it can transport off all the waste materials that have piled up there. Then your joint moves again, and the same spot you just squeezed is released again, and then can soak up with a fluid called synovia. That contains all the nutrients and thus nourishes the cartilage, repairs it so that everything works perfectly as biologically designed. At the same time, you have to understand the following. When you put load on your hip and your leg moves back, the structure here in the back shortens, for example, the muscle in your butt. The muscles in the front have to give in and lengthen. If you move your leg forward, the reverse is the case. Shorter in the front and longer in the back. If you move laterally, muscles on the inside become longer and those on the outside shorter and vice versa. All these movements ensure that all your muscles surrounding the joint are permanently being lengthened and keep their natural tensile strength and can be controlled by your brain so that the load on your joint is never too excessive. If everybody knew that, nobody would have hip problems and that would mean no pain and no arthrosis. But what happens exactly when we run into problems with our hips? Hip joints and knee joints account for most joint problems where surgery is needed and artificial parts are implanted. The whole story is pretty simple. Imagine for a minute how we use our hips. When we walk, we move our leg forward a bit and even less backwards. It rarely moves to the sides. The same is true for rotational movements doesn't happen that much in our daily lives because we sit, walk, and stand, or lay in bed. And that means if certain muscles and fascia are not lengthened regularly, they shorten, they mat up, they are not as flexible anymore. And that happens all around the hip joint because it is designed for such a wide range of motions. And now imagine, since we don't do any extreme movements with our hips, they, as a whole, stiffen up. Elasticity around diminishes over time, and that again means the muscles pull more and more against their antagonists. If we never move our leg all the way up like this, the muscles in our buttocks shorten. If we never move our leg all the way to the back, the muscles here in the front shorten. And as I said before, that means when the pull increases over years and decades, it doesn't happen overnight, that over these years and decades, the forces acting on the hip, the contact pressure, become greater so that the wear and tear on a cartilage is much bigger than ever anticipated by biology. Compare that with a wooden block and a piece of sanding paper. If you sand lightly, only a little wood comes off. But if you apply more pressure, you really start sanding off a lot of material. Or think of a mortar. You put something you want to grind in it, then you put the pestle in and allow its own weight to do the work. Maybe move the pestle around a bit. You won't see a lot of action. But if you apply pressure straight from above and then move, you'll grind everything in there into fine powder. That's why you apply a lot of pressure when using a mortar. 
Same thing happens in your joint that are subject to more and more mechanical wear. And now the following happens in your hip or hip joint. On the one hand, there's undernourishment because the cartilage doesn't get squeezed enough and then released again. It starves to death. And at the same time, the mechanical wear and tear increases due to this increase in pressure. On top of this, you experience pain, triggered by your brain when it measures all the forces acting down there. And this pain is meant to protect your hip joint. And when you heed that call, you'll move your hip even less. That's what the pain warns against. And that is the dead end of evolution with respect to our hip joint and modern life. So what do we have to do? What do we have to know so this won't happen to your hip joint? Or if it did already, how to repair it? We have to decrease the amount of pressure. Have to widen the joint angles. And the moment your cartilage is subject to on and off pressure again, is being nourished, it can regenerate and satisfy its hunger. Simultaneously, the pressure is going down so that wear and tear is within acceptable biological parameters. And the pain will disappear because now your brain remeasures the load situation and gives an all clear. Pain is not necessary anymore, or only a little. Why do experts shake their heads when they hear me say that your hip joint, even in cases of arthrosis, can regenerate? Because we can observe this in people who are in pain, where images are taken to see where the pain originates from, MRIs, x-rays are taken to have a look at the joint line, and we see, oh, pain and arthrosis. And a couple of years later, more pain, even more arthrosis. And this is how this misconception was spread that the degree of arthrosis is associated with pain. And now I'm going to tell you something nobody talks about. That your pain is in no way connected to your arthrosis. Not even with fourth degree arthrosis where you have bone on bone, even if it seems hard to believe. So please, listen to my arguments first. There are many people who have hip joints without any pain, but whose hips, after taking some images, show arthrosis, wear and tear. And these images let everybody believe that this person must be in pain. But he is not in pain. On the other hand, there are a lot of people who have excruciating pain in their hip joints, but have little or no arthrosis or any wear and tear. And of course, there is also the third group who has both, but only on account of that third group. Something that is happening simultaneously is confused with a causal relationship. What does that mean? It means because pain and arthrosis exist at the same time, these two are linked. Yes. There is a connection. He is in pain because he has arthrosis. But the other two groups suggest a categorical no to this concept. It simply is not true. This huge fundamental misconception regarding these biological effects will hang around for at least a couple years longer until it is completely debunked and disappears in people's minds. For us here at LNB, that's been true for decades now. It's never unusual when we see arthrosis of the first, second, or even third degree in a joint that, after normalizing the tensions in here, pain goes down drastically or vanishes for good. But you have to see this every day so that this fact becomes rather normal for you. But that's the future. Say goodbye to this misconception. In case you're affected by it, to the idea that your arthrosis in your hip joint is the result of being overweight or bad genes, or because you have to do hard physical work. These are not the reasons. We've just talked about the reasons, and we have a decades-long track record that proves us right. And our approach is gaining popularity because people who suffer realize that it works. And what do you have to do to get rid of the pain in your hips, to regenerate your cartilage?
the excess tensions need to go. The angles of motion have to be widened, and that gets a positive feedback loop going. When the angles are widened, the cartilage will be squeezed and released again on a wider area so it gets the nourishment it needs. Brief aside about nourishment. What's the best nutrients for your body? Lots of vegetables and only a little meat. And your planet will be grateful too. It will feel much better, as you will too, if you only eat plant food whenever possible. When your angles of motions widen, the yielding muscle in the back can become more flexible too and lengthen. And as a consequence, the forces acting on your joint drop back to normal and your cartilage can regenerate again because it takes on only as much load as it was designed for and not these excessively large loads that are the result of all those shortened structures and increased tensions. How can we normalize these major tensions? Simply by stretching. And in our stretching exercises, you'll also find strength building elements so that the entire structure around your hip works perfectly. And as the tension decreases, your joint is being normalized, your brain will stop triggering the alarm pain because your body realizes it doesn't need it anymore. The only biologically acceptable, tolerable way of reducing pain by having your body switch it off, not by forcing it, by giving painkillers or cutting nerves or trying ill-conceived therapies that have adverse effects and can make things worse. Taking painkillers all the time poisons you, wrecks your stomach. People complain about a floating sensation that keeps them from working, and the artificial hip replacements are not really a solution. Why is an artificial hip joint not the solution? Let me make one thing clear first. If the joint socket is broken and everything crushed to bits in there, it is a blessing and many thanks to those specialists that you can implant an artificial joint. That's just great to have. But if you implant an artificial joint because tensions are excessive, these tensions will vanish after surgery because of the anesthesia but people resume their old lives, and after a short time, the new joint will also be subjected to excessive forces, just like the original one. And remember, that one broke too. And please, don't believe that the artificial joint will not be affected by that pressure. Depending on the materials used, they've found hip joint particles in people with implanted hips. Cases of metal poisoning in their bodies. And that is a sign that wear and tear does not stop with artificial joints. Or the joints become loose and gaps open up, perfect for bacterial invasion that causes infections. And then you'll have a really bad situation where they have to take out the joints and bone material is lost. A disaster. Don't get started with that. So when your joint is damaged beyond repair, please go ahead with having an artificial joint implanted. Great. Most artificial hip operations are performed because of pain. And since we know that the overwhelming majority of hip joint pain can be banished by normalizing the tension here, most operations are simply not necessary. And the beauty of it is, you can simply try it. Simply normalize the tensions, do the exercises, use osteopressure, either through a therapist or applying it yourself, or the fascia foam roller massage. And most people afflicted with this kind of hip joint pain will notice, oh, I'm doing much better even with my arthrosis. How is that possible? And then they wake up and smell the coffee and realize that this really could be the right way. And why have a joint replacement when you don't have any pain anymore? No more reason for that. And this is how one should proceed. If you were able to follow my explanation and have your own experiences, check the internet and the numerous comments of people writing about exactly that. Please help us disseminate these facts. Every child should know this at the latest in school, maybe even kindergarten, where they are shown these exercises. They have to learn how to treat their bodies.
My two sons have heard about this all their lives. As soon as they feel pain in their hip joints, they don't think, oh, something's broken, arthrosis maybe, something infected? No, they ask themselves which exercise they've neglected recently and then pick up these exercises and everything is back to normal. And this should be the case for all of humanity. So please share this video, tell people about it, try it out yourself, motivate others to give it a try so that this sad state of affairs can be ended and millions of artificial joints needn't be implanted with all the suffering involved. If you like this educational video, please send us your comments about how you're doing with your hip. What are your experiences? Please write to us. And of course, subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any videos and you are always up to date and can learn even more about your body. If you want to start with exercises right away, check the upper box, click here to subscribe. Bye-bye. See you soon.